as followers of Jesus, we have different goals for our life. We're called, Jesus reveals the purpose of our life is not in what the media says, not the ways of the world, right? He says, woe to you who are rich, woe to you who are filled now, woe to you who laugh and are, and I want to all speak well of you. I mean, these are the ways of the world. What does the ways of the world want? I want to be rich, I want to be famous, I want to have all that stuff. Everybody think well of me, right? This is, right, even at shows, when I was date myself growing up, the lifestyles of the rich and famous, right, you know, many years ago. But he says, no, that's, that's tragic. That's not the goal of life. That's not the essence of life. The Beatitudes, both in Matthew's Gospel and Luke, talk about, no, we are made for the kingdom of heaven. Whether you're actually poor or poor in spirit, what is it? The treasure is the kingdom of God is yours. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. He has revealed, he has reminded us, taught us um, that our, we have been made for union with God. We have been made for heavenly treasures. That God has made our hearts not to be satisfied by things beneath us. If I can just buy stuff, that'll make me happy. That's beneath you. We have to have stuff to survive it, to eat food and all that. But how can something beneath us bring us lasting happiness? We are made in the image of God. We're not like the animals, just looking for a, a full belly. We are made for communion with God. And when we turn away from the materialism of the world, we turn away from seeking after fame and fortune, and we pursue God, we will experience the blessedness of the Beatitudes. We will experience the blessedness that Jesus talks about because God shows up. But we, what we know as good news is that it's not just believe in God and be really good and then you'll be happy in heaven. No, we can experience that blessedness now. We can experience his divine love now. We can experience his presence and his grace and his joy in our lives now. We can experience eternal life now. God wants to fill us with his very self but he can't fill with his presence and with his self what's already filled with the world. And so this is one of the challenges of the gospel today, of the Beatitudes. Am I, am I pursuing the woes of the world? Am I pursuing, if I just had more money, if I just had a better job, if I just had a nicer house, if I just, if I just, if I just, to say, you know what, I renounce all of that. I just had you, Lord. I just had more of your love and your presence in my life and your grace. If I was closer to you, then I would experience real life. And to seek first the kingdom of God, to seek first the heart of Jesus Christ. Now, it's so important, you know, we're, we're, tomorrow's Valentine's Day, today's World Marriage Day in the church. And so our minds naturally turn to, to marriage, right? And God has set up marriage to be a, so that husbands and wives can help each other pursue their supernatural purpose. And so it's a, it's a great, very fitting to tie the Beatitudes into marriage and say, is this marriage, is this family life, is it built on pursuing worldly goals or is, it, is this marriage and this family life built on pursuing heavenly goals, built on pursuing God? When the, when the couples vowed themselves to each other in marriage, they entered into a covenant with God. It wasn't to replace God. You will be my everything, and I will be your everything. That's idolatry. That's not going to work. No, it's, it's when husbands and wives get married, they need to recognize this person I'm marrying is actually made for infinite love, and I can't give that. They're actually made for union with God, and I'm not God. So we have to actually pursue something higher than ourselves. We have to come together to pursue infinite love. Not just, we'll pursue a nice house and we'll have a nice this and a nice that. That's the way of the world. It doesn't work. It never has. It never will. The Lord knows the answer. And so this is why marriage, he raised marriage to be a sacrament where husbands and wives can get, are given grace to love with the love of Jesus, that their love, their, their pursuit of God, their relationship 
Their time of prayer together, their time of, of love for, for each other can be a means of growing in holiness if they're open to it, if they're open to pursuing the Lord together. I want to talk about a real practical way of doing this, which is so, so critical, and that's for husbands and wives to spend time praying with each other daily. So many people, so many couples, even in the church, sadly, do not spend time praying with their spouse every day. And so they miss so many graces. They miss so many sacramental graces of marriage where husbands and wives are given the grace to love with the love of Jesus. How many times do I talk with couples, oh, Father, we're just so busy, we just don't have time. It's like, well, change your life. It's like saying you don't have time to eat or sleep. You're going to die. Change your life. You know, marriage is about pursuing God. If you don't have time to pursue God, change your life. You're, you got the priorities mixed up. Mixed up. And, the, and the statistics back that up. Maybe you've, heard this, maybe you've heard the statistics, right? You know, more than half of all marriages are ending in divorce right now in our, in our country, which is tragic. One out of two. But when you add in going to Mass on Sunday and praying together, husband and wife praying together daily, when couples who are married in the Catholic Church, they go to Mass together on Sunday and they pray together every day, the divorce rate drops to 1 in 1,100. From 50% to 0.1%. Just from adding, putting God first. Putting the fact that this person is made for infinite love first. And your relationship can foster infinite love, can participate, but cannot replace. And when you try to replace it, it's just going to lead to resentment. I didn't do this. It's like, oh. So let's talk about a real practical way husbands and wives can pray with each other. I was trying to think of a sports analogy, and I was preparing the homily on Super Bowl Sunday and everything. And I was like, well, football's too long and touchdowns too long. So, okay. So we got goal. Four, four letters, goal, gratitude, offer, ask, and love. Gratitude, offer, ask, and love. So if husband and wife is going to actually spend time praying with each other each day. These are kind of four components that can, can really bring lots of graces into their life. Gratitude, thanking the Lord for his blessings. Of course, we all know that the importance of that, cherishing the graces of God. Yes, life has its problems, but the Lord has been good cherishing Jesus' death on the cross, cherishing his salvation, cherishing his eternal life, cherishing his infinite love, being grateful for the, the truly amazing, infinitely good things that the Lord has given us so we don't just get caught in the mire of, well, I, I, you know, my boss is asking me to fill out that paper, that report. You know, it's like, okay, that may be stressful, but let's, let's be grateful for his infinite love here. Let's, let's spend some time with our eyes on, the hev on heavens. So spending time with that, you know, that gratitude to God, gratitude to God for the spouse, for a family, you know, maybe expressing that gratitude uh, for God giving specific virtues or graces to your spouse, and then offering that day. We offer you this day, Lord, everything that's going on, you know, the meeting we have, whatever is going on, to be able to offer all of that to the Lord Jesus. We offer our family, our lives, in union with the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Maybe if you know your spouse is going to be going through that day, you're going to ask them, of course, what should we pray for? What should we offer to God? What should we invite God into? And then, after we've offered everything to the Lord, after we've given gratitude, then ask, okay, Lord Jesus, will you please fill my spouse with this grace? Come, Holy Spirit, with your love, your grace. To ask your spouse, what, what, what graces can I pray for today? And then to pray for them right then, and then, you know, get the extra credit, write it down, Pray for it throughout the day. Pray for that grace throughout the day. Maybe send them a text message of a scripture that encourages them. You know, really, really zone in on that spiritual communion, on that spiritual relationship that you're called to spiritually help this person. You should be praying for your spouse more than anyone else on the planet. And then ending with love. We love you, Lord. Please fill our hearts, our marriage, our family with your love, with your grace. So we can love you more each day. We ask this in Jesus' name. You know, this maybe five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, spending time praying over your spouse, praying with your spouse could change your marriage. Bring graces. I've witnessed that many times where couples come to me and they're just on the brink of something bad. 
our first goal is gotta be praying together each day. Well, we just don't feel like it. I don't care if you don't feel like it. You change dirty diapers when you don't feel like it. You cook meals when you don't feel like it. You get to do the laundry when you don't feel like it. Pray, like put, your, put God first, right? Yeah, you have problems. Yeah, you might not feel like it, but you wanna, do you want God to do something or not? Right? Do you want him to, we've gotta open our hearts. So I thought I would kind of role play this out maybe in a little com- comedic way. Pretend for a moment that uh, this candle is, is my spouse, okay? And I'm going to pray over my spouse, right? So, hi, dear. You're looking nice today. Looking very thin. Have you lost weight, you know? <laughs> Done something nice with your hair. It's just so radiant, you know? Okay, I don't know. Can I pray with you? What a beautiful question to ask. Your, can I pray with you today? Can I take a moment to pray with you? Whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon, they come home for work or both. Okay, and so maybe you, maybe you hold hands, maybe you put your hand on their shoulder or whatever, Okay, Lord, thank you for my spouse. Thank you for all the, the ways that she um, uh, is a light to this world, all the ways that she, uh, um, all the ways that you pour out your love through her. Thank you for that. Thank you for your mercy, for your kindness. Thank you for all that you do for us, right? That gratitude. So we offer you this day. We offer you our lives together. We offer you everything, Lord. We just want to live for you. We want to live for your goodness, your love. Give you all the, all the things that she's got going on and standing on her feet all day, leading people to Jesus, you know. So I offer all this to you. I ask, Lord, I ask that you would please fill her with the Holy Spirit's gift of fortitude so she can persevere and be your witness. Fill her with your love, your peace. And it's this frustrating world. Love you, Lord. We just want to live for you. So fill our hearts. Let our hearts be radiant with your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Two minutes. You know, I don't know how long that was. I didn't time myself a minute, two minutes, right? So would spouses like that? I think so, right? It could change your marriage. Maybe you do this, awesome. Maybe you're like, well, Father, we pray at meals or we pray as a family. Great, awesome. But there should be three components in marriage of your prayer life. Individual prayer, family prayer, and spousal prayer. Each of those three components are critical. You need your time alone with Jesus, time to God to speak to your heart directly. You need to be praying as a couple together. And there's, there's prayers that couples can say together that, you know, is above the heads of the kids. They don't need to know what's going on. But to be able to bring the, the details of the problems, the stresses of life that they don't need to hear about, to bring that to God together. And then praying, of course, as a family. So this is my hope, my encouragement. What a beautiful valentine's day gift you could give each other to say tomorrow and every day or tonight every day can i pray with you what could i pray for today and to start to see the blessedness of that the lord says when couples really live out that sacrament of marriage to pursue the lord together to pursue the treasures of heaven to help each other get closer and closer to god to help each other um, Um, so much so that they can experience the Lord's love in their love. They can experience their, their relationship leading to a deeper holiness, a deeper communion with the Lord. In a moment, we're going to, at the end of the intercessions, we're going to take a moment to pray for all uh, married couples here. But this is my uh, real invitation. We're made for heaven. We're made for grace. We're made for infinite love. We're made to share in the life of God. And that doesn't just happen when we die. It's meant to happen now. When we set our hearts, not on the things of the world, but on the treasures of heaven and on the greatest treasure, which is Jesus Christ himself.